Hi everyone! Today it's finally time for the last reading journal update of 2023. So I'll share all the books I read at the end of the year and then we'll flip through this whole year's worth of pages together. The third quarter started really strong for me. I think I actually read most of these books in October, but then we moved houses and I had a super busy two months with my shop videos and traveling, so I didn't get to read as much as I would have liked again, but I did read some really good books around Halloween, so let's get into them. The first book I started almost immediately after posting my last reading journal video is the newest seventh book in the Cormoran Strike murder mystery series called The Running Grave. I've talked about this series before and mentioned that it's my favorite book series that I've read in my adult years. I had no idea that the newest one had already come out since we've usually had to wait a bit longer for them, but one of you mentioned it to me in the comments and I went and immediately started this book. So this was another almost 1000 page book in the series and there are no other books that are this addicting for me. I'm unable to put them down. I read them throughout the night and they make me throw away all my responsibilities in the best way possible, of course. This was no exception. It dove into cults and had an amazingly complex murder mystery as always, while also continuing the main character's storyline on the side. This was definitely one of my favorites in the whole series and I think the last three books have been in a league of their own. But that all being said, I feel like I finally have to mention that even though I enjoyed these books, this might be the last time I mention them on my channel. I never like to talk about drama, politics or other difficult subjects in my videos because I know none of you are here for that and I always try to keep these videos fun and relaxing. However, when it comes to JK Rowling, as much as I admire her skills as a writer, I feel like I need to mention that I absolutely don't agree with her opinions about the LGBTQ plus community. I honestly had never looked super deep into what she said, which is definitely very uneducated from my part. I'm not on Twitter or X or whatever it is nowadays, and I tend to avoid online drama in general, but I've now learned more about her opinions and doubling down on them even recently and I was honestly surprised to find out how bad it is. That all being said, I won't be doing a background check on every author I mentioned in my videos from now on. Unfortunately, I don't have that kind of time and energy and in general, I'm the type of person who likes to separate the art from the artist. I think as humans we can be friends even though we have differing opinions and I think no one should be violently threatened by using their voice. But since her comments are so widely talked about and I know there are people in my community who are directly affected by them and of course because they go against my personal beliefs, I just don't feel comfortable promoting her work on my channel from now on. So yeah, that's about that. Sorry for this small rant and sorry for all of you who love this book series and like to hear me talk about it. I wish our world was different and we would have gone a bit forward as a society, but unfortunately we are not there yet. But the last thing I want to say is that please know that whoever you are, whatever your title is or wherever you're from, you are loved, respected and accepted here in this community. But that's enough about that, so now let's move on to the next book I started right after this one. So I wanted to read Something Wicked This Way Comes as my main Halloween read and I won't set a spread for this so I'll try to keep it short. Even though I think the setting and the idea for this book were really interesting, I guess unfortunately the writing style was just not for me. This is very poetic and, dare I say, a bit overwritten from my liking. In general, I'm a very visual reader, so if the text is difficult to understand or requires extra effort to follow along, it's really hard for me to get into the story itself. So that's kinda what happened for me here. 
I read maybe until 40% and then just skimmed through the rest to see what happened. But yeah, I really wanted to like this more, but I guess this just wasn't for me. But then technically the last full book I read in 2023 was The Silent Patient. As a mystery and thriller lover, I've been really interested in this one after hearing many people's high praises for it. This was a true psychological thriller with a super interesting setting and an amazing ending that absolutely blew my mind. And I highly recommend it to pretty much anyone interested in this genre. In my opinion, the story line itself was quite simple in a way, especially compared to something like the Cormoran Strike series, so I think it's a great first read in this category too. I read this in a few days, which always means that I struggled to put it down. The story follows a criminal psychotherapist who wants to treat a woman who seemingly out of nowhere murdered her husband and hasn't spoken a word ever since. I won't give any other spoilers, but as you can imagine, the whole case is very interesting and very chilling all the way to the end. After The Silent Patient, I started to read the first book in the Mistborn saga. However, I didn't get far before I got so busy with the move and all the holiday and new year preparations that I couldn't read anything for almost two months. Even the beginning of this series was so promising, so I'll definitely pick this one up later this year. However, recently I've heard everyone talk about Sarah J Maas in social media, probably because the new Crescent City book is coming out, and I just could not not pick up one of her books. So after all the holiday and new year craziness, I chose to start The Throne of Class, which is a series I've been staring at the whole year basically. I suddenly felt like it was time. So I started this seven book series and let's just say that I've already finished the first one. But since I read most of it at the beginning of this year, I'll include it in my next reading journal update where I'm sure we'll have a longer chat about this series. So that means that The Silent Patient was the last book of the year and also the last book spread of my 2022 and 2023 reading journal. I honestly hoped I would have been able to read a few more books than this last year. 15 is kind of embarrassing considering my initial goal, but at the same time, it's still 15 books and so many enjoyable worlds, characters and hours spent. It's also much more than I've read in most of my adult years, so I don't think there's much reason to dwell on it either. Reading is something I do purely for entertainment and I don't want to attach any pressure to it and now I have so many exciting books on my list for next year that I'm very looking forward to getting into. When it comes to the most outstanding and memorable books for me this year were first of all the Six of Crows duology that I read at the start of the year. It was just so good, I still think about it, and it's one of those series that I wish I could unread so I could read it again. And then another beautiful book that stood out for me was The Shadow of the Wind, which also made it into my all-time favorites. I would recommend absolutely anyone to read this masterpiece. It's so sad to finally say goodbye to this beautiful black journal that has served me for the past two years. I did a flip through of the first half a year ago, so I'm not repeating the 2022 pages in this video, but I'll link it to you in the description in case you haven't seen it yet. In general, flipping through this journal makes me so happy and proud. There's something about this scrapbooking style that makes all the spreads even more interesting and complex looking than my regular blood journal, and I'm sure I'll treasure this journal forever. I'm so excited to start a new reading journal for this year too, and I think I'll probably follow the same two-year cycle with it as well, since I probably won't read enough books to fill one journal with them. I still have some empty spreads even in this one, but this journal is already so thick and well-loved that it's a bit difficult to use and lay flat, especially while filming. So we will let it finally retire to my bookshelf next to all my old bullet journals and start fresh with a new journal. 
I'll post my 2024 reading journal setup video within a week or so, so please stay tuned for that. But anyway, I think that's all for this time. Let me know what was your favorite book for this year. I will hunt them down and add them to my list on Goodreads. And other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye. <laughs>